Good morning, Europe. It's Tuesday, the 24th of May. I'm Raul San, and it's great to have you with us. Let's take a look at our top stories. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky says the next weeks of war will be difficult as Russia steps up shelling in the Donbass region. A veteran Russian diplomat resigns over the war in Ukraine, saying he is ashamed of his country's actions. Europe's security and resilience are at the top of the agenda on Tuesday at Davos, as we are going to hear from Spain's Pedro Sanchez and the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. The Ukrainian army is having an increasingly difficult time in Donbass. The eastern region concentrates all the efforts of the Russian army and despite their little progress, heavy fighting continues with incessant shelling. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the next weeks of war will be difficult and there is no alternative but to fight. The most difficult situation is in the Donbass. Bakhmut, Popasna, Severodonetsk, the occupiers are most active in these directions. They created a slaughter and they seek to eliminate everything that's alive. No one has destroyed the Donbass like the Russian troops are doing right now. In response to Ukraine's insistence on asking its allies for more weapons, the U.S. said it will give Ukraine military assistance until the end and announced that 20 countries will offer new security assistance packages including artillery ammunition, coastal defense systems and tanks. In the short four weeks uh, since the contact group convened at Ramstein, the momentum of donations and deliveries has been outstanding. And after today's discussions, I'm pleased to report that we're, we're intensifying our efforts. New satellite photos of the Crimean port of Sevastopol appear to prove Zelensky's accusations of the progressive theft of grain from Ukraine. Kyiv is discussing with officials from the European Union, the UK, Turkey and the UN the establishment of a corridor which would allow exports of Ukrainian wheat, sunflowers and other grains. A veteran Russian diplomat to the UN in Geneva, Boris Bondarev, has resigned in protest to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It's a rare example of Russian dissent at the war and its reasoning. In a statement, Bondarev has said that he has never been so ashamed of his country than on the day the invasion began. He continued by saying, the aggressive war unleashed by Putin against Ukraine and in fact against the entire Western world is not only a crime against the Ukrainian people but also perhaps the most serious crime against the people of Russia with a bold letter Z crossing out all hopes and prospects for a prosperous and free society in our country. Given the scathing nature of Bondarev's resignation it's likely that this will not be the end of the saga. Yet he notes that he hasn't done anything illegal. I just resigned and spoke to my mind, he has said. However, he ominously notes, but I think I have to be concerned about my safety, of course. Russian soldier Vadim Shishamari has been sentenced to life in prison for killing a civilian in the initial days of the invasion of Ukraine. It was the first war crimes trial to be held in the war-torn country since Russia's assault began three months ago. While the 21-year-old showed no emotion when the verdict was read out, his lawyer maintained the sergeant initially refused to follow orders to shoot the victim and had never intended to kill 62-year-old Alexander Shilipov. Well, first of all, the verdict has not yet entered into force. The fact that I'm preparing to file an appeal means I believe that it was passed with violations. Meanwhile, the Kremlin's spokesperson, Dmitry Peshkov, wasn't so optimistic. The defendant admits he shot Shelipov, but says he had asked his widow to forgive him. Unconditionally, we are concerned about the fate of our citizen. But I repeat once again that, unfortunately, we don't have the possibility to protect his interests at the place. Practically, there is no activity of overseas agencies. However, 
It doesn't mean we won't consider the possibility to continue attempts through other means. The Kremlin has repeatedly denied allegations that Vladimir Putin's troops have targeted civilians and committed war crimes on Ukrainian soil. But officials in Kyiv say some 11,000 crimes have taken place since the assault began. The pro-Russian leader of Donetsk says several hundred Azov-style defenders will be tried in the separatist region. President Putin's spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the Kremlin was worried about the Russian soldier Vadim Shishimarin, who was sentenced to life in prison in Ukraine. He stressed that uh, Russia did not have any institutions in the country to, quote, help him. Peskov, however, added that it did not mean that uh, Russia would not use other channels. Dmitry Peskov also said that uh, Russia is not considering an exchange of as of style steel plant soldiers for Viktor Medvedchuk, who is now under arrest in Ukraine. Mr. Medvedchuk, one of Ukraine's richest men, has been the leader of a pro-Russian party in Ukraine for years and is known as someone who has really close ties with uh, Vladimir Putin. But the question whether Russia is uh, considering the exchange of soldiers from Azov style steel plant at all remains up. In the air, Russia's deputy foreign minister Andrei Rudenko said that uh, Moscow was not ruling out uh, such a possibility, but at the same time, the head of the self-proclaimed uh, pro-Russian uh, Donetsk separatist republic, Denis Pushilin, told uh, Russian media that all the soldiers from the Azov Stalin will face an international tribunal, and he added that they are all being held on the republic's territory. And on Thursday, the Russian Supreme Court will take a decision on the request uh, to label the Azov Regiment a terrorist organization. If it happens, this would make any possible exchange even more difficult to achieve. Galina Palunska, Euronews from Paris. Most stalls still have their shutters down. But the reopening of the market in Bucha, just northwest of the capital, marks a return to a semblance of normality for this Ukrainian town, now synonymous with war crimes. Valeria Bilik is a butcher who's returned to the market. She says shops are opening up, little by little. People with small kids and dogs are coming back. It's like what it was before. The city is reviving. I think that Bucha is changing. Roads are being repaired little by little. Everything is coming back to life. We are really glad to see it. And market punters Alina and Dimitro say it's a shock in the beginning. And after you realize that it's our reality and you need to change your life to continue living. Life is going on and you have to live, whatever the life is. And in some parts of the East, people are slowly returning to their old lives. Ukrainian forces have managed to drive away Russian troops from Kharkiv. This is Alexander. He's returned to his family home to inspect the damage left by the war. He says, so far we have nothing, no job, no money. We will have to find something, maybe down in the garden, so that we can repair the holes. We will figure something out. But despite the hope, people still have to queue for food in Kharkiv. Ukraine's First Lady has urged the World Health Organization to help tackle the country's vast mental health crisis, warning that the effects of the three-month-old war could last for decades. She says, We count on your expert support to build a truly unique and world-beating psychological care service. Yes, we have such an ambition, and we have the ambition to do it quickly, so that along with victory in the war, we will also gain this victory over grief, shock and stress to our citizens. And it's in places like Borodyanka that this battle is yet to be won. Residents have weathered war, massacres and heartbreak. Now free and safe, many have to live with horrible experiences. Nadia, a resident, says, The sniper was out there. My son was walking this way. He was going to the shelter, and he was shot in the back of the head. Healing is never easy. 
especially where the haunting signs of war remain.